thanks for being here. Thanks for taking take, thanks for taking the time to to listen to this little talk, the Web UI community. Um, this time I decided to talk about something in one of the areas that I I'm I'm not like I I, I didn't start with the with backend, but eventually with the with the time passes by. I started to 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 like it and to love it uh, until the time that um, I will tell you a story. This story uh, complements the context for for the tool that we're going to use and that I'm going to explain. Definitely, aggregators is something that it's out there for a while, and for Mongo, probably you use this on a daily basis. Probably this is something that it's not the brand new stuff, but I I want to focus the the talk in to how uh, this tool and especially aggregators solved a huge problem that I had in the past for one of, um, of our clients. So the, the, the name of this call, the, this talk is called MongoDB aggregators, uh, little like setups making queries was never too easy. Um, okay. So this is what, what are we going to say? Uh, the the problem uh, how how we started to build in a um, a software for our one of our clients and then how Mongo aggregators became into our solution and also uh, I will share some code that I have I I <laughs> rebuild the code for for the um, for the presentation this is not what the client was was using but it's close to what we plan close to what we coded for it in the past and we we can also um, create some um, some simple queries using using the the, the mongodb uh, engine just to, to demonstrate a little bit further about how um, the aggregators are working so uh, in the past, when I was working for another company, small company, I was allocated to a, a client that they had a um, like this big uh, lab in the United States. They were selling uh, diamonds and fine jewelry. So they were building collars, earrings, bracelets, and different types of fine jewelry, but their specialty was uh, the engagement rings. So they were having a lot of different varieties of uh, diamonds in different shapes, in different color qualities, with different um, costs, with different carat weights. So this led us to a huge amount of data to work with. So uh, they they were selling this through Shopify. They had the front uh, the front page in Shopify because they could handle uh, the data ingestion. They could handle all the um, the checkouts they could handle all the, the 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 shopping carts they could handle the the shipping so they were using this but at um, at the very end of the flow they had mongodb databases in mongo atlas so they were ingesting diamonds this database and they were constantly extracting this data because um Shopify was able to calculate the taxes and all the shipping costs and stuff. But let's say that, for example, for one diamond, the cost is $100, but the sales price or the price that they were selling this diamond to the, to the final user was uh, $175, for example. So they had certain business rules that they were changing over the time that forced the, the flow of the company to have the database um, like as it is, like a raw database of, of data uh, of, of this collection of, of all the, the diamonds without the final stuff that they were adding in Shopify. Um, so in one meeting, they decided to implement new stuff and new features to the web page. So they, they, they checked out in the market, um, in the marketing like case study, that their customers were uh, constantly not aware of this, all the capabilities and all the, the, the features of a single diamond. So they saw that they were buying diamonds or buying an engagement ring or, or an earrings or something, uh, but definitely there were more diamonds that they were like better 
or they were cheaper or they were or they had um, like better uh, features or better capabilities than the one that the people um, were were buying. So they decided to create a diamond recommendator. Uh, when you led it to the PDP page, um, you well, this was like the idea to have a, a diamond recommendation widget um, with better price, improved color grade, improved clarity, with better card width. So basically what, what they try to do is to, okay, so you're showing a diamond, you're showing something to the, to the final user, but guess what? We have a better option for you to buy. We have better uh, color, better stuff. Um, probably for the same price, a little bit like more expensive, but with a substantial change on this feature that we were uh, discussing. So they decided to go with this. And on a planning meeting, we started to think about what would be the best solution. But we found out that we had 1 million different items. Uh, sorry about that, the docs are barking now. <laughs> um, so they decided to put all the information, the 1 million dollars or 1 million items in, uh, in the Mongo database. And we have a huge amount of data to work with. We, we, th this was not just with a simple query that we could just retrieve all the information and then make calculations something you know, somehow, and then just you know, put those things in, the, in, in, in other database and even in Shopify, right? So um, they also decided to go with recommendations on several business logic. Uh, best value, which means uh, the same of be or better carrot weight, but with a uh, better price or with lower price, uh, with better cost, probably the same uh, the same specification for the diamond, the same features, but with uh, um, different costs, like obviously it was beneficial for the final user or better attributes, somehow the color, the clarity, the, the cut. So they were different shapes, there were different uh, weights, there were different clarities, different everything. Uh, so we had this, this situation. It's not just because we are, uh, dealing with a Mongo database that we will have something in between and put all the recommendations in the web page. Um, and turns out it, it, it gets a little bit more complicated because as I mentioned, MongoDB Atlas was the cloud that they were using for, for the data. And they had everything in Google Cloud Platform with uh, cloud functions. They were using a, a lot of serverless services to ingest Shopify and to ingest uh, the all the diamonds with the uh, actual sale price and the actual uh, final attributes and the sales tax and all the the, the shipping costs for different uh, parts in the country. So the users were using Shopify, and uh, everything was uh, recalculated in the back end in, in Google Cloud Platform. Um, so we decided to go with Compute Engine because. This recommendation um, process had to happen uh, like twice or maybe three times a day. So what we were trying to do is to calculate all the, 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 all the diamonds that they were, uh, okay, give me one second. Sorry about that. Uh, so we were trying to recalculate the recommendations because uh, the, the, the the people were, um, th there was uh, like a process of buying diamonds. So we had to recalculate over the time which diamonds were sold or which diamonds were uh, already available for, for the process. So just to make things a little bit faster, uh, this is the like the different, um, platforms that we were using, but what we had in each platform. In MongoDB, we had the retail price. It means the, the price that the company was buying the diamonds to the sellers, to the uh, retailers, to the people that was actually getting the diamonds, uh, and all the attributes, color, clarity, um, card width, uh, like uh, the shape, um, the, the, uh, the, the 
the carbon type and et cetera, et cetera, all the attributes that a diamond has. And in Shopify, we have the sales price, but also we have promotions, discounts. So we had to be super careful about what was the relationship that we built across the, the flow with the, the different type of diamonds that we have and how they were related in the MongoDB with all the base attributes, with all the stuff that we're showing in Shopify. We had to be consistent. We have to be super fast. So we created like a, uh, an ETL job that extract, transform, and load information from the Mongo database and creates recommendations. Basically what we did here, it, this is the recommendation is another collection in the MongoDB that has a, an object of the, with the ID of the diamond that we were uh, using as a base. And it got, a, it got a, like a, an array with different objects to demonstrate that the, those diamonds that we were recommending or we were suggesting for this base diamond was like the, the, the appropriate way to do it. So what we did, um, because of how this platform works, I, I won't be like in, in like super focused on, on details because this is more like an architectural thing, but Shopify, when you, when you wanna, like bring information from Shopify, you cannot just like uh, use a, a REST API. You have to um, ask for a bulk operation in order to Shopify uh, to deliver um, a set of data, right? So from Shopify, we need to, uh, to have the, the price sales and discounts and from MongoDB, all the attributes. So we were extracting information and combining them together in order to have a better object because at the end of the day the recommendation widget was only um, consuming data from this extra collection that we were creating and with react we were rendering this uh, these different cards for the different diamonds so this information didn't pass through shopify until the last minute that the page was loading this and extracting the data so we transformed with applying the business rules. Uh, again, this was huge, huge work because uh, they had different criteria to make a recommendation of how the people was buying the, the, the diamonds or, or, or the engagement ring or whatever they were being, right? Uh, we were uh, combining that data, as I mentioned, and after we generate the recommendation, we create a new, a new collection. Um, so the solution we found is uh, the aggregation or the, the MongoDB aggregators. As I mentioned, you already, probably you already know this, probably you use it uh, on your daily basis. But what's an aggregation is, uh, um, it's a method of the, uh, uh, deriving group of subgroup data by analysis of a set of individual data entries. In other words, what, we tr what we're trying to do with aggregators was to get collections of data that matched a certain business rules and analyze them in order to determine if they were able to become a recommendation for a diamond or not. So uh, we uh, delegated this to the MongoDB engine, which is really, really robust in the Atlas platform. So we were um, kind of delegating some compute power to this engine and we were not uh, getting uh, this uh, payload in the backend or in, in the power, uh, compute engine uh, instance that we were using. Syntax is very, very simple. You have a database, right? A database created in Mongo. This is um, the JavaScript. Uh, then you have your, oh, sorry. Then you have a collection, your collection. For us, the collection was the, 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 the raw data that, diamonds that we have there. And then the function is aggregate. Aggregate what it, it, it's it's going to do. You, uh, the, the parameter that gets it's an array of different conditions that the set of data that we're looking for uh, matches. So basically the, the, the information that we were using here, it's very, very important of how we're retrieving data. And since it's pragmatically, we can actually build or make uh, math operations here in order to calculate different sets of data on the fly. Right? When we were 
creating the recommendations. So basically what we're doing here, um, well, this is an example, we're matching it that we're getting collection of data from the database where the size property matches with the word medium. It, it performs a, a full text search on the field. We can use a, also use, a, um, sorry, we can also use con, 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 um, contains, we can uh, use uh, regular expressions, we can use a lot of development tools or uh, the, uh, feature syntax that we have for the language in order to create a more complex uh, experience building these queries. Um, we can also like group, we can project information, we can do a lot of stuff. Uh, I will explain a little bit and, and later. So the flow that we follow was we created a bulk operations in Shopify to retrieve all the diamonds. So this represented a huge, huge file of uh, all the diamonds and the sales price that we have in the, for the final user. Then we downloaded the file. This sorry, I got a mistake here. This is not CVS. This it was a JSONL file. Um, so we used the IDs from Shopify to retrieve all the data one by one because we were trying to create recommendations for all the diamonds that they were listed on Shopify. So we got the first diamond and started to, to make uh, and calculations on their attributes in order to get only the set of data from the big database that we had that it was relevant for the recommendation. We were not just one by one, one by one. No, no, no. We, we were getting the, the attributes from the Shopify version and generating the recommendations, but from the other database. Why we did this and why we didn't like do it from on the actual on the actual um Shopify uh, file or the Shopify database because they were the, the, there was like a, 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 this is something that I I didn't understand in the, in the very beginning and it's kind of hard but business had different margins so they go like okay so diamonds from one carat to three carats will have a margin of twenty percent. From three carats to six carats, we have a margin of uh, fifteen percent. So they have different margins of revenue on different sets of diamonds. So we had to go through the to the uh, Mongo DB database in order to check that margin because that didn't happen on the on the Shopify on the Shopify version. We just had the final price calculated. So we had to actually do it for all diamonds that we were retrieving from Shopify to recalculate uh, and to see if they were they had a, a discount or something like that. So it was a little bit tricky to understand the, at the beginning. Uh, at the end of the day, it's just revenue and it's just how they were selling this and that how they were getting revenue from the items. Anyways, um, we had to normalize and combine all data uh, we have JSON in one side and JSON in other side, so it was super simple for us just to combine the data. But we had to normalize and make sure that we had all the attributes, and all the attributes were called the same, uh, with no per case, no lower, like everything normalized. Um, and then we applied the rules for recommendations, and here is how the aggregators saved our lives. Uh, when we were applying the recommendations um, or the, the, the business logic for the recommendations, we were actually um, creating the aggregator with the different calculations on the different attributes. And that extends us to actually do it um, in a more robust way that the, 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 the process was heavy. So um, using Node.js, because it was written in JavaScript, uh, using Node.js, we built some uh, different instances of this, and we started to do pagination over the, the million of items that we have. So we were able to be more efficient on the process. So the process started, we probably, this happened like six hours. Uh, it was a six hours process, like the processing all the diamonds, but then we were able to reduce it to maybe one hour and a half uh, this uh, last version that I worked on in order to deliver the, the whole set of recommendations. And then we created a new table, a new collection in MongoDB. 
And here is like an example of the code of how we were building the aggregators. This function is called get third value. So they had, as I mentioned, they had probably they'll have like five diamonds. All diamonds, they are uh, one carat, carat weight. But maybe there was one diamond that had slightly better color or slightly better uh, clarity, or it has fewer flaws. So what we're, we're trying to do there is to check which one of those five diamonds was the best. And if you got the best in your PDP, you you got all all the recommendations, but this the, the getter uh, the better value was the most important business rule because they were trying to sell the best diamond possible to the client with their budget. So what we tried to do is here in the aggregate we were passing the match expression. Oh, sorry. And uh, we built a query factory with uh, with this this parameter so we we passed the all the diamonds attributes and then we passed the type of recommendation that we wanted i will show you this uh query factory in a while and then when this happened we got in the better value array an array of all this collection of data that matches with what we want with what we want to do on the on the recommendation um so we have a here a, a, a reduce operation just to to get the the, the the diamond that we wanted a little bit more cal calculation but this is entire program uh, programming no 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 thanks for the um, for the aggregate the aggregate stuff happens here so this is the syntax as I previously showed another um, slide um and this is the query factory that we had in the other function. So when the best value was passed by on the query factory parameter, we were pushing this all this stuff to the to the match expression. What I want to what what we wanted to do here is uh, we were matching if this was uh, the lab ground, which is with. Uh, if a diamond was created in a laboratory and not from the earth, uh, and we use this uh, dollar sign EQ uh, expression, which is that needs to be equal. This, uh, this works for booleans, it works for numeric values, and also for strings. Uh, but for strings, it's better to use other other search methods. And here's how it happens. Uh, on the on the better value, we go to the carrot property, and then we were able to check the better value if the carrot of the base diamond was up to 0 0.05 or uh, down to 0 0.05. We we just had that range in order to search the better value for another diamond. And then it has to it has to have the same shape. It has to have the same color, the same clarity, the same fluorescence, the same cut, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is a, um, another one that we use. It, it's JT greater than. So we were using that the carrot of the base diamond is greater than this range and lower than this range. And in the in that if the if the fluorescence that we have from the base diamond, it's it's on the um, it's on an array that we defined previously, so it's a good recommendation because they they have a, a they, they how can I say it? They measure the fluorescence or some attributes like the the clarity and the color with with um, with letters. So we put a, a, an array of letters of characters, and if the the fluorescence or the, the, the of the feature uh was in the in this array it means that the recommendation it's it, it's it's um it's viable so i will share the code now uh a little bit of how what we did probably this is this only this also includes um a little bit of architecture stuff so we can take a look So I think you can see it, right? 
Okay, so this is the repo. Um, I kept the pet project. Obviously, we built a proof of concept and then we built the final version. This is not the final version. This is just like the pet project and the, the, the proof of concept that we started. And this is my index file. What I have here is a collection of ins instructions uh, using uh, a single weight in order to, to be synchronous, to have a synchronous process. So we started to, to do everything I, I mentioned on the slides. We uh, started operation, the bulk operation on Shopify. Then we wait for, the, for all the file to be downloaded. We downloaded the file, which is this one. This is all, this is, yeah, this is all the diamonds that we have. As you see, it's like, oh my God, a lot of, lot of lines. So we have the Shopify ID. We have the, this is this, the SKU. This is the price range, which uh, includes the, the, the final sales price, right? So we only use the value, this value, the SKU and the, uh, the price in order to, to build the recommendations because we were using this to search in the other database. Um, so going back to the index.js file, uh, we read the file and then we get all the diamond information from the other database and then we generate the recommendations. So the, the, uh, the function that actually means uh, more for us in this topic is this get and serve recommendations. Okay, so we started here. Um, we call the start function, which is this guy here. So as you can see here, we use a pagination in order to uh, to be able to process uh, batches of information and not the, all, the not the whole um, not the whole one million of items. Um, as I mentioned, this is a proof of concept. How we did it in the final version was. Um, we're building instances and we use we use threading in the Node.js to actually do it in a, in a better in a better way. Uh, so, anyways, we did pagination to process batches of information here, and we actually created this um, this array in order to um, we, we also created an aggregator in order to. Uh, get the, the, the batches of information. So we use this aggregator in order to paginate over the ones that we wanted to get information and can then get the recommendations. And I will go straight uh, forward to this, the get, get better value uh, function, which is the one I already showed to you. This is the query factory. We're going to get a query factory. And here we have different recommendation types best value, less fluorescence, lower visual card width, um, better color, fewer flaws, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we, at the end, we have more, more business rules. And as you can see, we defined ranges on the carrot weights that we have for the diamonds in order not to, to use or the, that the results of the aggregators to reduce it to the minimum. Uh, pro, it was maybe 20, maybe one, maybe zero, maybe 15, maybe 100. We, we don't know uh, the, at, at that time because of the huge amount of data. But in, on each recommendation type, we have different um, like calculations here. The range is for all the, the aggregations. But for example, here in, in the fluorescence, we had to check if the fluorescence um, was uh, very special. Uh, we we started to move across the the values. It's very special, special, medium, fine, non, etc. Um, for better color, that uh, we had to to check if the color was um, in in this array as I mentioned. So we we move on to the to the we, we had to. Subtract one in the index to in order to deliver the best the best value uh, the best color possible. D is the best color you can have in a diamond, and L is the worst color that you can have in a diamond. It's like more like like yellowish, and D is like the most clear and transparent one. So we we were uh, trying to if the, we got the base the base color as an H, 
we uh, wanted to have a G at least, or maybe an F. So we, we started to make some calculations and adding business logic here, right? Um, okay, so this is how it, it was back then. We, this is how we build the aggregations. Now I will open um, a database that I use for other for other pet project that I have. So we can just check this out. I use um, MongoDB Compass. This can be also written in code, but for the demo purposes, I will just go through um, to this. So I have a little database here. And here in aggregations, you can go and build your query as complex as you want. I will just... Um, Second, yeah, I will just create a, uh, an expression for you. So I will use the same expression I was using for uh, matching something. And I will go to the match expression. And then here uh, we need to do, we need to define expression, right? And we will we will pass the and query in order to be able to aggregate stuff or to add uh, an array. Um, so I will use an array here with a collection of different um, conditions in order to match stuff. So I will check out that I will use this property here which in English is state but I will check that we have some false if not I can just change here to false a couple of them okay now in aggregations I will um, we'll create an object here that EQ go to Okay, so I built my, my expression to uh, determine if this property from, the, which is this guy here, is true or is false, right? So as you remember, I changed a couple of, of, of documents, the, this property to be false. So what, I, what I, I'm doing here is I can add more, um, more conditions here. Let's say that uh, for example, that apellido path, which is uh, uh, surname, it's Spinoza. So I will just put in here. Then um, EQ. So I'll get just one, um, just one result because I am uh, I am doing this right. So Stado is false and apellido path is Espinosa. That state is false and uh, surname is Espinosa. And this is a really really good way in order to just work with uh, subsets of data or collection, a little collection of data when you have a huge amount of information or even for this simple databases. Um, so in conclusion, let's go back here. In conclusion, um, aggregators, it's a really, really simple way to perform queries. 
but this also gives you the capability to have a optimization on the process and it matches with a lot of different process to apply business rules and this is how aggregators saved my life when i was working and for this client thank you very much this is all from my, from my end questions comments please go ahead Thank you very much. It was very interesting. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so, and then do we have questions? Well, if now, uh, I presume we, we may con uh, come to finish our meeting. So, Daniel, thank you very much for your performance. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today uh, and hope to see you on our next event. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.